Hello, good morning, and welcome back to the Squirrel Heat YouTube channel. And this is the Premier League preview, week number five. And we're going to be kicking off with Saturday's games at three o'clock. Friday's game, Liverpool versus Chelsea, or Chelsea versus Liverpool, as we were playing away. Go check that one out, it's in the description below. I've done a full review of it. Um, brilliant game, loved it. Nail biting stuff, as is usual, but go check that one out in the description below, if you please. Now, coming up on Saturday is Hull versus Arsenal. And Hull, in their last game out, managed to scrape a draw, get a nice free kick from Robert Snodgrass. And Arsenal also, in their last game, also managed to get a nice little penalty at the end of the game there against Southampton, and they won 2-1. Now, in this game, it's going to come down to who's got it, who wants it more. And for me, for me Hull have got the desire, they've got way more desire, but Arsenal have got the talent levels. It's going to be putting these two things together and seeing who comes out on top. Now, for me... If it's going to go either way, and it sounds really stupid to say it because it's Arsenal, obviously, and they're a very, very talented team. But for me, they just don't have it at the moment. They just aren't going to be clicking very, very well. They've got their new signings in and stuff like that, which is all well and great and stuff like that. But they're not clicking properly just yet, and neither is the whole team. Sanchez looks like he's going to be coming back into some form. Ozil needs to put some work in. For me, I think it's going to be a draw. But, and I think it's going to be a one-all draw, but I think if it's going to go either way, it'll go Hull's way because they've got way more passion. Mike Phelan looks like he's going to take up the manager's position, and rightly so. And I think that they've just they've just got it this time. And I, I just, I think it's going to be a wake-up call again for Arsenal. Looking at like how they did midweek and people are a little bit happy with them getting a draw at PSG. They, it's That's not what they should be doing. Like PSG have lost some of their, like they've lost some big players this season. And yet, even so, Cavani looked like he could have had five goals. It's dangerous times for Arsenal right now. And if they rest on their laurels of the fact that they got a draw against PSG, they will lose this game against Hull. But I'm predicting a one-all draw. Next up, we've got Leicester versus Burnley. And Burnley, again, on the receiving end of that free kick from Robert Snodgrass. And they came out with a one-all draw against Hull last week. Leicester came out last week against Liverpool and they did lose 4-1. Uh, in what was a clinical display by Liverpool, including the clinical assist laid on by Lucas Leiva. But, <laughs> Leicester midweek uh, in Champions League have bounced back against, I think, I think it was Club Bruges. I'm not entirely sure. I think it was, though. Um, and they come back 3-0 victors in that one. And that will give them a lot of confidence coming into this one as well. So I think that Leicester are going to have a very good step up on Burnley in this one. I think Leicester can get back to winning ways in the Premier League. And it will be a 2-1 victory to Leicester. Coming up next is Manchester City versus Bournemouth. And last time out they ran out 1-0 victors over West Brom. Which is no mean feat. Because West Brom are a difficult team to play against. And Manchester City, obviously most notably, have had one hell of a week where they've smashed it in the Champions League and they really ran riot in the Manchester derby. Even though it only finished 2-1 due to a Claudio Bravo mistake, they absolutely ran riot. That first half was unbelievable. If they can do that over 80, 90 minutes, they'll destroy this league. They'll destroy this league um, and it'll be unfucking believable <laughs> It really will be. Um, for me... No no discredit to Bournemouth. There's just no other way that this game's gonna go for me. I think Manchester are gonna be Manchester City, sorry, are gonna be far too strong, far too clinical, and I think that this could be a three one victory to Manchester City. Next up we've got West Bromwich Albion versus West Ham. West Brom have still got talent, they've still got a good people going forward, pretty solid at the back, pretty solid in the middle as well. They've still got it going forward. And it's going to put them in good stead coming up against a team in West Ham, which are not going to be in any way confident, I don't think. They're losing at home and they're losing away. They're not clicking together. They've got their main player back now, Dimitri Payet, who was their saviour, lord and saviour last year. And even he cannot seem to pull this team together at the moment. It's just not happening whatsoever. Have they got too many injuries? Because their injury list is fucking massive. Like It was like us last year. When we had a load of fucking injuries when Klopp came in. And they all seem to go down at the same time. It's the exact same sort of situation that West Ham find themselves in right now. And can they pull themselves up? This isn't going to be the week that they're going to do it. I think that the way that their defence and their goalkeeper is at the moment. I think Rondon's going to have a fucking field day. And I think Berahino's going to have a good field day as well. I'm looking at... I think in my head I was predicting like a 2-1 victory. I think it's going to be 2-0. I don't think... While they can score West Ham... 
I don't think they will. And I think it'll be a 2-0 victory to West Brom. Lastly, on Saturday evening, we have Everton versus Middlesbrough. Everton getting an absolutely stunning victory against Sunderland last week. A 3-0 victory where Lukaku ran the show at the end of the game. He scored, I think, about 12 minutes or something. Scored three goals. <laughs> nice little hat-trick. Absolutely beautiful little hat-trick. Middlesbrough were unfortunate in that they lost against Crystal Palace. But Palace were very good in their attacking play. And they got the 2-1 victory over Middlesbrough. And I think Everton are going to have too much for Middlesbrough this week. And I think that Everton are going to come away with at least a 2-0 victory. Maybe 2-1 because Middlesbrough can, can score goals. But I'm going to go for 2-0 and it's going to be 2 Everton. Now we move on to Sunday's games and we look at Watford versus Manchester United. Watford are going to be the more confident of the two teams, I believe. Because of the way that their week went last week against West Ham. West Ham go 2-0 up. Watford come back and win 4-2. They go four goals unanswered because they were pissed off because of the, the Rabona assist by Dimitri Payet. Quote by Troy Deeney. They were trying to mug us off. And it was just like, yeah, they were trying to mug you off. And you mugged them straight back. Absolutely unbelievable performance in that second half. Manchester United, on the other hand, are not performing very well at all. They are not clicking. They didn't put it together. They looked absolutely overran in the first half of the Manchester derby. They looked absolutely at... They didn't seem to know what they were doing midweek in the Europa League. It was unbelievable performance. And their star players are not picking it up. Now, people say, oh, the star players didn't really play midweek. Right, fine. But people... Are, Pogba played. Pogba is your star player now. Whether you like it or not, Pogba is your star player. He's the most expensive player in the world. People that gave Gareth Bale shit in his second season at Real Madrid. But his first season was fucking immense. Pogba isn't even clicking it together right now. And I'm taking, I'm saying it now, as a lot of people did say last night on Twitter, even the Redman TV said it as well. If Pogba scores that goal that Henderson scored last night, the fucking internet would have exploded. It would have broken down. Man United fans would be turning around saying, oh, he's not worth 89 million, is he? No, he's fucking not. Not right now, he isn't. And he's not, he's not. You pay that much for a player, you are wanting someone that's going to come in and just bang. He's going to light your league on fire. He's going to do exactly like the likes of Kevin De Bruyne are doing for Man City. All that, that's, that's, what, that's what you pay that money for. You don't pay that money to say, oh, he's going to gel. He's going to, like, he's going to get into the team and he's going to start to find his position. Fuck no, you bring him in because of what he did. You don't bring him in just because it was like, it's the worst mistake transfer-wise that Man, City, Man United ever made. In letting him go for pretty much for free. Apart from, I think there was some fee attached to it or something. I'm not sure. You pretty much let him go for free. And you only bring him back because it was a fucking mistake. And he looks class at Juventus. Yeah, he does. Look at the midfield that was around him. It was ba He was allowed that little bit of freedom. Because he knew he had people behind him and next to him. That were going to cover him. Who's he got now? Schneidlin doesn't look up to it. Herrera doesn't look up to it. Carrick doesn't seem to be able to get into the team at the moment. I don't know. And I think that this is going to be a dangerous game for, for Man United because if Watford start clicking like they did against West Ham and Troy Deeney, Icarlo, start really clicking that fucking play together, this is going to be a dangerous game. And I'm going to predict it. I'm not going to predict a loss for Man United, but I think it's going to be a 2-2 draw. But if it's going to go either way, it'll go Watford's way. And it's dangerous times right now for Mourinho and Man United. Coming up next, we've got Crystal Palace versus Stoke. Palace getting the victory last week. Stoke very much not getting the victory last week. Sorry, Stoke, but I mean, I, 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 I've got no excuses for you. I really don't. I know you, you might be missing a couple of players here and there, but you had a good transfer window at the end of the end, end of the day. You had a pretty good transfer window. You should be doing a lot better, even against Tottenham, who haven't been looking the best in like since the start of the season at all. Obviously, Crystal Palace are going to be wanting to take advantage of that defensive, those defensive woes and goalkeeping woes. And who have they got? Christian Benteke, who will most likely be headering balls left, right and centre. Might even throw in a fucking overhead kick for if he wants to. Just because he seems to be really good at doing those every, like, does it once a season? Something like that. I'm not entirely sure. But I think it's going to be a very, very dangerous game for Stoke to be honest with you. And I don't think they're going to come out with a victory here. I don't think they're going to come out with a draw here. I think it's going to be a 2-1 victory to Crystal Palace again. And I think Stoke are going to be struggling again. The penultimate match on Sunday is Southampton versus Swansea. Southampton on the end of a cruel penalty, penalty against Arsenal last week and they lost 2-1. And then obviously you've got Swansea who Diego Costa ruined their night and they got a 2 all draw. But that's still a positive to take away from a team as strong as Chelsea. Now... Both teams coming into this look like they could be pretty equal. 
and I think I'm going to call it pretty equal as well. I think Swansea and Southampton are similar sort of levels, and I think they've got similar. I think they've got a similar sort of chance of winning, but I think to, just to purely, I'm going to sit on the fucking fence on this one. I think it's going to be a one-all draw. It could go either way this game. It depends on who's going to kick into fire. Southampton could could probably nick it. If they start Charlie Austin like they did midweek in the Europa League, if they do that, then yeah, this could be an absolute game changer. And I think it could go Southampton's way, but I'm going to go for a draw. I think it's going to be a one-all draw. And the final game of the weekend, Tottenham versus Sunderland, half four. And Tottenham are going to be steamrolling Sunderland. It's not going to be pretty. I don't think it's going to be pretty. Sunderland could do something fucking magical and they could do something ridiculous. It's there's no in between. There is no in between, and I think Tottenham are going to be too clinical. They're going to be had too much for Sunderland. Going to pile a bit more pressure on Sunderland as well. Sunderland though really have to make sure they stick with their manager this time because if they get rid of David Moyes, who the fuck else is there that they could have? They had Dick Advocat. They had Decanio. They had uh, what's his name? I can't remember his name. I really can't remember his name. Nope, it's gone. Guy that was after Decanio though. Can't remember. Fucking hell, what's his name? Nope. Gone. Sam Allardyce and David Boys. There would be nobody else. Uh, Goose Poye, that's the one. <laughs> Get there in the end. Um, there's not going to be anybody else. Yet someone as solid as Sam Allardyce who's going to secure you. Pretty much your place in that league. And he's done that. But now he's the England manager. David Boys is going to give you the opportunity to build if you give him the opportunity to build. If they don't do that, there's... Nobody in this fucking planet that I could think is going to be taking over Sunderland at any time soon if they get rid of another manager. They've got to stick with him, give him time, have patience with him. But this Tottenham team, I think, is going to tear Sunderland apart. I think it's going to be a 3-0 victory to Tottenham. Let me know what you think is going to happen this weekend. What's your team going to do? Are they going to win? Are they going to lose? How do you think they're going to do? Who's going to be star player this week? Let me know what you think. I'll uh, love to read it in the comments. Like the video, subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will catch you later.